This video is an overview of the French political system. A uh, couple of key words to remember about France is that it's a unitary state and highly centralized, and we also often call it a semi-presidential system. The reason for that is that um, the people elect the president just like they would in, uh, kind of like they would in the American uh, presidential system. Uh, they also elect the National Assembly. Uh, so you would think with this basic construct, you'd get the kind of the same dynamics uh, in the relationship between the executive and the parliament, uh, the legislature, as you would have uh, between uh, the Congress and the president in the United States. But you don't. That's why it's called a semi-presidential system. And exactly how the dynamics between these are, are different, uh, we'll get to. First, I'm just going to uh, mention uh, how the courts work. So uh, in France, there is no formal judicial review uh, like the American Supreme Court does. Uh, there is a Conseil Constitutionnel, Constitutional Council, uh, that reviews the constitutionality of bills before they become law. And this uh, council has gained more power over the, few first, uh, over the last couple of decades. Um, but this is still not the, the same type of, of powers that the American Supreme Court has. So because of that, we can't really call this a checks and balances system the way uh, the American state works. And uh, there are other interesting peculiarities as well. So, uh, for instance, if we look at the parliament here, there is a direct election to the National Assembly. There is not a direct, uh, direct election to the Senate. Instead, uh, the people elect municipal, departmental and regional legislatures and these bodies appoint members to the Senate. So that's an indirect uh, form of representation. Typically, the electoral system in the past, uh, the, the electoral system used to be a proportional system of proportional representation. Each party uh, could have the same share of, of seats in parliament, and it was easy to, for small parties to win seats. So if we look at the Third and Fourth Republic, for instance, that was the way things were done. That's partly the reason for why uh, these earlier forms of, of these earlier systems of government, these earlier regimes, so so often produced deadlocks. Uh, and when the French political system was reformed, one of the measures taken, one of the reforms, was to move to a two-ballot system. And this was actually inspired by a lot of the reforms to the French um, political system were inspired by uh, the United Kingdom and its effective governance and stable governance. Uh, so this two ballot system is kind of like first past the post, except it's not just one round. So uh, there's a two ballot, two round system uh, in these single member districts. And for a candidate um, to be able to stay in the race for the second round, uh, that candidate would need 12.5% of the vote. Otherwise, the candidate will have to uh, withdraw and support someone else. And this has led to uh, less of a wasted vote than you'd see in, in, in the first past the post system. Uh, but it has also uh, resulted in more of the smaller parties gaining access to the National Assembly because uh, there is a good deal of voter coalitioning uh, of, of um, electoral coalitions being done by the parties based on where they have the greatest success uh, chance of success in the elections. So the parties actually talk to each other in this system uh, and agree to um, uh, run one candidate for the left or one candidate for the right, depending on uh, what riding they are in and which candidate is, is more popular in, in that riding. Moving on to the relationship between parliament and executive. This is where it also gets interesting because in the American system, uh, the st strong checks and balances means that these different bodies are effectively equally strong. Not so in France. Uh, here is where the system looks much more like the United Kingdom with a weaker parliament and a stronger executive. The National Assembly has uh, is, is the, the 
lower house of this bicameral parliament, with the Senate being the upper house. Uh, the Senate, however, is effectively much weaker than the National Assembly. It can object to proposals uh, and it can block constitutional changes, but in many ways it's seen as an outdated and unrepresentative body, much like people would uh, object to problems, uh, point out problems with the House of Lords. In the National Assembly, that's the more uh, that's the lower house, but the powers of the National Assembly have been quite constrained by um, a series of, of qualifications. So it can, if the government makes a proposal for for a law, proposes a bill for legislation, then the National Assembly can make amendments to it. But those amendments actually have to be approved by the executive. And a budget bill that has not been approved within 70 days uh, will actually pass automatically. The, now, the National Assembly can make a motion of censure, which is effectively a vote of non-confidence in the cabinet. But to do so requires gaining an absolute majority for this motion of censure to pass. And that's a very rare thing indeed. So this motion of censure is more like a symbolic gesture by the opposition saying, we really don't like what the government is doing right now, rather than an effective tool for bringing down a government. So the National Assembly is indeed quite weak. And that means that the functioning between the executive and um, the, the parliament uh, is very much like the effective governance we see uh, in the Westminster system. So let's have a closer look at the um, uh, executive. Uh, the president, when de Gaulle changed, uh, uh, reformed the French uh, political system, you really can't talk about uh, French politics in the mid, in the 20th century without talking about Charles de Gaulle. He was such an influential figure, uh, an equivalent really uh, to Margaret Thatcher, if not more uh, influential than she was, given how many changes he actually did to the actual political system. Um, and uh, we can see this in how he strengthened the executive. Uh, he was concerned with the, the gridlocks of the Third and the Fourth Republic, and he wanted to avoid those. So uh, when the Americans reacted to the United Kingdom and its strength, strong and effective executive and thus created checks and balances to avoid that concentration of power, Charles de Gaulle was concerned with the gridlocks of the Third and Fourth Republic and wanted to make sure that government could govern effectively. So he strengthened the executive, he gave it emergency powers, he gave it the powers to call a referendum and to dissolve parliament and, and call for new elections, and also to appoint the prime minister. Uh, so because of, of all these powers rested in the president and because of the constraints on uh, parliamentary powers, the, the uh, pro governing process is as smooth as the House of Commons. As I mentioned, the prime minister is appointed by the president, but the president by convention, uh, but, but the president appoints the prime minister from the biggest party in the National Assembly. This might be uh, the same party as the president, and if that happens, the prime minister will be quite weak. Uh, but it might also be from the opposition, and if that happens, the prime minister can be stronger. So there can be a pendulum movement here between president and prime minister in terms of who uh, is the, the stronger uh, party. And in case of, of in case the prime minister is from the opposition, uh, we talk about cohabitation, uh, where they have to negotiate more, where these two uh, office holders have to negotiate more. Uh, the cabinet is appointed by the president and responsible to parliament. So this non-confidence vote I was uh, talking about in the legislature, uh, that actually brings down the cabinet, but not the president. Uh, so then uh, the president would have to form a new cab cabinet of some form. Uh, so this is uh, all of this is why we call the, the French system a semi-presidential system, because it does have the direct elections of, of the president. The president does stay in office even if the cabinet falls. But there are these, these um, constraints on parliament that, that gives it a distinct uh, Westminster quality, if you will. Moving on to the bureaucracy. Uh, so France is really the archetype of uh, the centralized nation state. Uh, it uh, has been so centralized to Paris 
it, it has been so France has been the archetype of the centralized uh, nation state, and this starts with Louis the Fourteenth, the Sun King, uh, but continues to this day. So during the Revolution, there was also centralization and so forth. But not only that, uh, this is also a case where um, uh, bureaucrats have been uh, politically powerful. Uh, so you have an integrated elite because uh, traditionally, if you wanted to join the civil service, you went through one of the Les Grandes Écoles and the INAS, uh, and then you started your, your career within uh, the bureaucracy, you rise through the ranks, and then uh, you can leave the bureaucracy to lead parties or large corporations. And if you go to the large corporations, it's called pantouflage, uh, 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 that, that process. Uh, but as a result, all these people that were formerly in, in the bureaucracy, they maintain their ties and the networks and their connections. So you have an integrated elite between the, the civil servants and the political parties and these corporations. Uh, and that also enables the, the French centralized state to engage in didigism to a l large uh, extent. So you have nationalizations of corporations, you have investment credits and subsidies, a very, very active state and uh, w with a great uh, role in society, uh, which also means that uh, civil society is very circumscribed. As I mentioned, uh, fr the French state is, is uh, very centralized and that has consequences for local government. Uh, it used to be that the prefect was appointed by, by the Minister of the Interior and loyal to the center, controlling local governments until 1981. Uh, so this was called to tell this extreme oversight of local decisions by the French government. Uh, but that didn't leave much flexibility for local needs. Uh, and there was a lot of protest. Part, this, this extreme oversight was part of what fueled the days of uh, 1968, the, uh, the days of May. So since then, there has been some decentralization. Tutel has been abolished. And now elected departmental regional council heads um, do have uh, economic responsibilities. But even with these uh, qualifications, uh, the French state is still uh, uh, certainly much more centralized than what is the case in the United Kingdom. Uh, so uh, it, it's really the case of, of a, a strongly centralized unitary uh, uh, nation state. Uh, finally, a word on uh, public policy and the pu pursuit of grandeur. Uh, so uh, de Gaulle, of course, uh, really, um, really setting sort of the standards of uh, the, the French politics that came after him. He embarked on a project of, of Le, uh, Les Trente Glorieuses. Uh, he, he embarked on the project of restoring French uh, prominence during the mid-20th century, including uh, getting a nuclear arsenal, having uh, French troops being in parallel to regular NATO command and, and opposing the United Kingdom entry into the common market. And, and of course, also struggled to keep the empire, the, the Francophonie, uh, under French auspices. Um, so this was really a, an attempt to, to um, uh, sort of a, a nostalgia of, of the French uh, empire uh, of, the, of the 19th century. Uh, and between that and the, the strongly centralized French state, uh, this, this is um, really an expression of, of how strong the power of the state has been in French politics. But lately, the, it has come under challenge uh, from several different forces. So there has been privatization since the 80s, limiting the scope of the state. Telecom airlines uh, have been privatized and a long series of bureaucracies have become publicly owned. Uh, so even though, uh, uh, b but the state still retains a s a significant stock in many of these companies. Uh, also, uh, the president, uh, presidency is not as strong as it was under de Gaulle, uh, partly because of cohabitation, so this, this um, uh, situation where the, the president has appointed a prime minister from the opposition, but also because of, of um, uh, less visionary leaders maybe, and uh, less charismatic leaders and scandals. But also the power of civil society has grown and there's been a power shift in the economic sector towards the high-tech industry where the anarchs uh, have been um, uh, less of a factor. Also, of course, uh, the economic forces of globalization. So all of these together have challenged the powers of the French unitary state. So that's uh, an over, overview of the French political system, uh, this strongly unitary, highly centralized, semi-presidential system. Uh, I hope you found it useful.